So it's all good and well to dream of becoming the next Mark Shuttleworth or even Mark Zuckerberg. But according to a new survey by VentureBurn, tech startups aren't as glamorous as they're sometimes made out to be. Employees and founders are often lowly paid. Under pressure, only 17% of startups are actually pulling a profit. VentureBurn partnered with FMB Clifftop Colony and Curio to pull just under 200 tech startups. To discuss those findings, we're joined by the MD of the umbrella company, Creative Spark, Matthew Buckland. Uh, he joins us live from our Cape Town studio. Good evening to you, Matthew. Uh, tech startups are very exciting because they bring innovation, new technology that's good for the country, and it's often quite sexy. Um, but you say it's not all roses. Explain what you think the, the state of tech startups is following this survey. Well, I think uh, there are very exciting uh, uh, places, certainly if you're an employee or a, or a founder, to be part of something that's growing and to be part of such a creative environment where you're innovating and, and pioneering in a, in a business sense, a technology sense, is very, very uh, exciting, especially if that startup you know, makes it big. Um, but there are very, very tough environments. I mean, we've seen the Mark Zuckerberg uh, movie about how uh, Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook, you know, in his dorm room, and it went on to be, you know, a multi-billion dollar empire. But the reality is, obviously, very few uh, startups actually go on to make it uh, that big. In fact, in the survey that we did, uh, we found around about only 4% of, of startups actually go on to get uh, venture uh, capital uh, uh, funding. So it is quite a, a tough environment. Um, when we uh, surveyed uh, startups, the 200 uh, startups that, that replied to the survey, we um, found that um, you know, uh, benefits were virtually non-existent. Uh, your previous guest was talking about pensions and medical aids. Well, we found that exactly zero startups were actually offering uh, pensions. And only 2% of startups were actually offering uh, uh, medical aid. It's obviously an affordability factor. But um, you know, I think it, uh, it 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 really speaks to how how tough the startup mm -hmm. environment is. I mean, it begs the question: if if startups is the startup environment is tough, why are people doing it? And of course, I think people are are doing it not necessarily for money, but you know, to be a pioneer um, and for for lifestyle flexibility reasons and and for reasons of of, of a creative outlet. It's interesting you say that um, often the founders aren't making much money themselves and they don't mind because they do have that drive um, that need to achieve something. The, the problem, I guess, is that they have to employ people and those people want to make cash. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, the survey also revealed that um, virtually 70% of, of all the founders of, of, of the startups that we surveyed had actually previously worked in a, in a corporate. So these are people that are working in a corporate setting. They're building their networks. They've got a taste of corporate life. And I think they want something different. I mean, they certainly, um, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the reasons we put down there was uh, why would you want to do a startup? And one of the, the options was make the big bucks. I mean, that came out really relatively low. I mean, the, 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 um, the actual motivators for startups was a desire to be a, a, a pioneer, a, a desire to be, uh, have control over, over what I do, um, a creative outlet. So certainly, while I think uh, startup founders do have the, uh, you know, an eye on, on the money, they do want to make successful businesses that produce uh, revenue to, because they want to grow those startups, I think they're actually um, creating these startups for, for, for bigger reasons, for, for more personal development mm. uh, uh, reasons. You know, and that's not to say that uh, startups don't make money. Uh, there are a lot of service startups that make a lot of money. We've, we found that most service startups, start startups that provide a service to other businesses, were actually the more profitable startups um, from, from day one. And those were the startups that tend to, tended to be self-funded. And those were the startups that, um, you know, would obviously uh, uh, grow salaries at Aggressive, uh, more aggressively in those startups as, as they grow and become more successful. Matthew, the idea is um, that, that countries should want tech startups, uh, should nurture them because it aids competitiveness. Chile uh, offering tech startups, I believe, um, big subsidies uh, to, to 
bring in foreigners if, if they have to. What is the, the state of support in South Africa, often funding uh, cited as a problem? And on the other hand, um, do, do tech startups need that much support or do we rather need to nurture an entrepreneurial uh, culture where, where people can literally make something out of nothing if they have to? Well, absolutely. I think we need an entrepreneurial culture in this country. I mean, we've heard of a concept called the Silicon Cape. Uh, it's a it's a kind of a, a concept which uh, really uh, a, a kind of inspires the idea of Silicon Valley within South Africa. Um, we found that a, a majority of startup founders tended to choose uh, the Western Cape to do their um, uh, uh, companies, to start their, their companies, around about 60%. Um, obviously, because it's a, it's a lifestyle type of city and a startup founder can literally choose where they want to work as opposed to a corporate choosing where they want to work. I mean, there is relief for small businesses. I mean, there's a small uh, tax benefit, a small business tax benefit that the government provides. There's BE uh, relief. The, the BE conditions aren't as onerous for, for companies, you know, that uh, make under five million uh, rand per annum. But to be quite frank with you, I think the government can do uh, a lot more. Uh, you know, there are great initiatives in France, the UK, and the US to support entrepreneurs, to support startups. And I think um, there's, there are initiatives from the, the private sector, fund, uh, First uh, National Bank, for example, recently invested 3 million rand into the Silicon Cape initiative, which is really designed to help startups network and provide support to entrepreneurs. But I think the government can do a lot more, specifically because in this country, I think job creation is such a key uh, activity. And it's the entrepreneurs that are, are, are creating jobs and are stimulating jobs. So I think government can do a lot more. Matthew, final question, um, and please be brief, we're running out of time, but I'd like you just to quickly lay out the, the trends. Um, a surge in black entrepreneurs, that's good news, but what's wrong with women? Um, we did see an increase in women entrepreneurs, so I think that is, 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 is positive. But uh, the, the changing demographic of entrepreneurs, there was a Silicon Cape uh, um, survey done uh, about five, six years ago, and we saw an uh, increase in black entrepreneurs, which, which was good. Not as high for women, but there was an increase in women entrepreneurs. And then we find that uh, entrepreneurs tend to be, you know, within the 25 to 30 uh, age uh, bracket, with, you know, literally half of all entrepreneurs that we surveyed, you know, below, w literally in their, in, the, in their 20s. So I think those are the demographics of entrepreneurs. Young blood. Thank you very much, uh, MD of Creative Spark and a uh, guru on uh, startups and uh, a founder himself, Matthew Buckland, coming to us from Cape Town there.